Would you be at all surprised if I told you that several mainstream media corporate journalists were actually not only embedded with Hamas on October 7th, but some may actually, I don't know to, to, to what degree, be with Hamas in support of them. Now, I don't, we're going we're to go through this, but we know that several, uh, one, one individual is already uh, fired. These are freelancers. I'm not surprised to hear this news. There's video emerging reportedly of one of these reporters wielding a grenade as they're embedded with Hamas. Sorry, I think there's a fine line between being embedded with a group or participating. Now, that's the extent we don't know. We don't know. I don't know if these people were participating, but there are questions about whether or not the corporate press knew this was going to happen. You see, uh, Cassandra McDonald, who uh, works here, posted a photo of a paraglider and said, wow, this guy was paragliding into Israel. Could you believe it? And uh, got a lot of cr uh, uh, criticism from the right. However, that was before we knew what was going on. And so a lot of people were like, that's an unfair characterization. This just looked like a paraglider. But then everyone realized what was really happening. And so, yeah, you want to criticize Cassandra. But at the same time, the corporate press, I don't I, I don't believe for a second they did not know. Now, it, that doesn't mean that editor, the editors and uh, you know, high ranking individuals, uh, high level positions in these companies knew exactly what was going to happen. But I think it is reasonable to say, considering these people were, their photos were being used. I think it's fair to say that uh, there's involvement and there was some, some degree of foreknowledge. Let me read some of these stories for you. From the Jerusalem Post, Israel demands action after journalists reportedly joined Hamas massacre. AP responded they had no advanced knowledge. The media watchdog, Honest Reporting, published an investigative report late on Wednesday showing that journalists from leading news outlets, the New York Times, AP, Reuters, and CNN, joined Hamas terrorists from the Gaza Strip on October 7th to document the horrific, horrific events with their cameras. The organization, which works to expose anti-Israel bias in the foreign press, raised weighty ethical questions in the investigation regarding the presence of those photo. Uh, of those photographers alongside Hamas terrorists. Here's one tweet from at Israel. A breaking expose by honest reporting reveals that three freelance journalists who work for major media outlets accompanied Hamas terrorists across the border and reported from the horrific massacre. Here are a few examples. You also have a video, as I mentioned, of a guy wielding a grenade. Now, what's that all about? Among other things, it begs the question of whether the photographers were aware in advance of the intent to carry out the massacre and how they arrived on the scene so quickly. Did Hamas allow them to be there? Did these news reporters have approval to enter Israel alongside the terrorists? Did the photographers inform their editors that they were accompanying the terrorists as they carried out the attacks against Israelis? Very interesting. You see, news organizations are crooked. And uh, understand this. The simple and benefit of the doubt explanation is that as this goes on, these freelancers say, hey, look, I got photos. The news organization says, we don't care how you got them. We want them. CNN broadcasted images of Hamas. According to the investigation, the photographers documented up close the kidnapping of civilians and soldiers, an attack on a tank, and the lynching of an IDF soldier. In addition, a CNN freelance journalist broadcasted images of the burning tank and accompanied the terrorists into Gaza. CNN, trending now on The Messenger. CNN fires Palestinian journalist for claims he embedded with Hamas terrorists during October 7th attack. Well, I have a few tweets. Uh, let's see. If we can uh, we'll, we'll pull this one up. This is from honestreporting.com. Broken borders. AP and Reuters pictures of Hamas atrocities raise ethical questions. I really want to address the issue here with um, the limits of reporting. But first, let me give you the breakdown. All right. So we know about the, the embedding. We have now the uh, documented photo evidence, which I think is very, very important. AP photojournalists or infiltrators. Four names appear on AP's photo credits from the Israel-Gaza border on October 7th. Hassan Eslaya, Yusuf Masud, Ali Mahmoud, and Hatem Ali. El, uh, Eslaya, a freelancer who also works for CNN, crossed into Israel, took photos of a burning Israeli tank, and then captured infiltrators entering Kibbutz Kafar Aza. Here's uh, the AP's reporting. Did anyone at the AP stop and ask, uh, 
how did you get this photograph? Why are you allowed in an active combat zone? Why aren't they shooting at you? None of them asked. They don't care. They want the photo. It's juicy, right? It's war. When war happens, ratings go up. Here's another photo of from Hassan Eslaya. Palestinians from Gaza Strip under Kibbutz Kafar Aza on Saturday, October 7th. The militant Hamas rulers of the Gaza Strip carried out an unprecedented multi-front attack on Israel. There's a lot of important ethical stuff to break down in this. Do you want the images or not? Serious question. A lot of people are outraged, wondering to what degree these people are working with Hamas. I believe it's fair to say that Hamas is going to approve of all of this. The U.S. does the same thing. If you want to bet with the U.S. Army, they give you limits. But do we want to see these photos? The question is, we maybe don't. Just because the photo shows something does not mean it's showing you something honest. And that's the important thing. The photos you're allowed to see control the narrative. If Hamas is allowing these journalists to be here, and they're probably controlling what images go out, this burning tank, they want you to see it. What about the killing of civilians? Certain things they won't let you see, in which case the images they're sending out are meant to manipulate. It is very difficult to understand uh, what their what their goals are, and it's very difficult to uh, figure out what we should or should not be accepting of. Honest reporting has obtained screenshots of Eslias now removed tweets on X in which he documented himself standing in front of the Israeli tank. He did not wear a press vest or a helmet. And the Arabic caption of the tweet read live from inside the Gaza Strip settlements. Interesting. Shortly after the publication of this article, we were alerted to footage of uh, Hassan Eslaya next to the Israeli tank. In addition, a photo has surfaced showing Eslaya with Hamas leader and mastermind of the October 7th massacre. Yahya, I'm sorry, is it Yahya? Yahya Sinwar. Take a look at this. In the hours following our expose, new material is still coming to light concerning Gazan freelance journalist Hassan Eslaya, whom both AP and CNN used on October 7th. Here he is pictured with Hamas leader and the mastermind. That's incredible. AP, Reuters, CNN, and the New York Times. What were their photographers doing inside Israel on October 7th? Coincidence or are they part of the plan? That's right. Hamas, why did, why did they do this? Now, a lot of people are going to give you the generational conflict thing. Oh, they're trying to reclaim land. BS. The Abraham Accords were revolutionary. Donald Trump set forth, uh, set into motion this plan, the, the, the Abraham Accords, which is going to normalize relations with Israel and bring several Arabic nations into the trade fold or bring Israel into the trade fold with them in the region. Hamas was sidelined. They were no longer part of the negotiations. So what did they do? this. Now, Hamas knows that in order to maximize damage and attention, they need the information to get out. So here you have this guy smiling, taking a selfie with a Hamas leader. Absolutely incredible. These news organizations don't care for whom they get the content from. They don't care if they're putting out misinformation or manipulation. They don't care at all. They don't ask the question. And here is footage of a sly after he crossed into Israel and took photos of a burning Israeli tank. He then captured infiltrators entering Kibbutz Kafar Aza. Note that he is not identifiable as a member of the press, but AP and CNN deemed it acceptable to use his services. This is the important point. I, 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 these people aren't journalists. But do we want the information or not? Hamas recorded themselves committing atrocities. And then Israel released that information. News organizations replayed these videos. I think it's a good thing they did. So we can see just how awful and horrible these people really are. They're, they're committing evil acts. But also understand, it's what they wanted. So what do you do? I don't have the answers for you. This is a strong moral question. I do know that the answer should not be Joe Biden sending $100 million dollars in aid, which he claims is going to Palestine, but we know will be intercepted by Hamas because Hamas runs the Gaza Strip. In the above video, Eslaya says in Arabic, everyone who were inside this tank were kidnapped. Everyone who were inside the tank were kidnapped a short while ago by the by Al-Qassam brigades, as we have seen with our own eyes. For those unfamiliar, the Al-Qassam brigades, it's uh, Hamas's uh, armed faction, their militaristic faction. More photos he took in Kafar Aza, show Hamas terrorists trying to breach the kibbutz's fence 
and burning house uh, and burning and, and a burning house inside the community. Take a look at this photo. This is from what source is this? Uh, it's AP, an AP photograph, Palestinian militants from the Gaza Strip run by the gate of Kibbutz Kafar Aza on Saturday. This was Hamas's plan. Maximize press attention, disrupt peace negotiations. And this is what they did. So the question is, are these actual journalists or did the corporate press pay terrorists to help them carry out their plan? I got to say it again, man. I don't have the moral answers. But if Hamas had these guys embedded, these are these are pro Hamas people, friends with the Hamas leadership. And part of the plan was to get selective images out. And the Associated Press and CNN paid them. I got serious questions. Man, I wish I could give you the, the easy moral answers here. I wish I could. I can't. Do we want these photos or not? I will say it again. You comment below. Let me know what you think. I think the challenge is when you allow pro Hamas factions to dictate what information gets out because they're killing Israeli civilians and there's not going to be pro Israeli journalists, they're controlling the narrative to benefit themselves. Masood, who also works for the New York Times, was there as well, just in time to set foot in Israeli territory and take more tank pictures. Ali Mahmoud and Haytam Ali were positioned to get pictures of the horrific abductions of Israelis into Gaza. Mahmoud captured the pickup truck carrying the body of German Israeli Shani Luke, and Ali got several shots of the abductees being kidnapped into the strip. I, 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 I want to stress this, man. Don't you want these photos of the kidnappings? This is tough. Then are you playing into their plans? Interestingly, the names of photographers, which appears on other sources, have been re- have been removed from some of the photos on AP's database. Perhaps someone at the agency realized it posed serious questions regarding their journalistic ethics. Reuters lynching as image of the day. Reuters has published pictures from two photojournalists who also happen to be at the border just in time for Hamas's infiltration. They took pictures of a burning Israeli tank. Reuters was kind enough to add a graphic warning to the photo caption, but it didn't prevent editors from shamelessly labeling it as one of the images of the day. Now, here's the big question. Did they know about this? Dr. Eli David, Eli David, breaking Israel Minister of National Security. Photographers who joined Hamas during the massacre are terrorists and will be dealt with as terrorists. He is referring to CNN, AP, Reuters and New York Times photographers embedded with Hamas on October 7th. Wow. These journalists knew. They knew what was going to happen. I I do not believe for a second. Why else would they be riding on the back of motorcycles? Why else would they be at the border? It doesn't mean they knew the exact extent of the attack. I believe they likely did. Israel is now saying they are terrorists. It's dangerous territory, man. But welcome to war. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. The, the, the labeling of journalists as terrorists terrifies me. It really does. Because we want to get access to information. Don't we want the photos of the people being kidnapped so we know they're being kidnapped so we can call for their rescue? Hamas wants the image out there, too, to shift the narrative back to them. And they got paid, baby. They got paid. What Israel does next will be very interesting. Noel Pollack says important expose by honest reporting photographers working for AP, CNN, New York Times and Reuters were embedded with Hamas on 10-7 and accompanied the terrorist group into Israel. They knew the attack was coming and participated in it. As I already mentioned, in one of the videos, one of these guys is wielding a grenade. I think these guys are Hamas. I think these these look. CNN, The New York Times, AP, Reuters, it's entirely possible they had no idea but they did not care. Let's be real. It's also entirely possible these news organizations knew exactly who they were hiring. They knew exactly who they were buying buying from. So I have several questions that need to be asked of these news organizations, and they should be brought before Congress. When did you hire these men? Do you have a contract with them? Do you have a retainer agreement with them? Did you buy photos from them after the fact? That's big. It's possible these guys took the photos and then contacted the news organizations and said, would you like to buy them from us? The other question, what culpability will these organizations face if it turns out they gave direct monetary resources to Hamas personnel? Welcome to war, my friends. Welcome to war. 
There are no easy answers. But I can certainly tell you that the corporate press, man, it's been said over and over again, they're the enemy of the people. I think the simple solution here is that they just don't care. And you've got some editor in New York or whatever at the Reuters building, and he gets word we've got great photos of what happened. And they're told you can have the best photos. You'll get all the clicks. You'll make all the money. And they say, I don't care how they got them. I don't care who they are. I want them. Because they're vultures. They're evil people. Right now, you have a lot of people on the far left protesting in support of Hamas, protesting in support of Gaza, and not even knowing what is really going on. So I will say, despite the fact that they put out these photos and these videos, it's not like it's reaching these people who support them anyway. So then what was the real point? All I think it did was benefit us, those who are critical of Hamas and defensive of Israel. I can already hear the collective stop shilling for Israel. Dude, I don't care about generational conflict here. Israel is not the United States. I will call for ending foreign aid to all these countries with no problem. But Hamas breaks a ceasefire, storms into Israel, kills 1,400 or so people. This is what I hear. You know, Grayson reported this. Actually, it was friendly fire from Israel. When they were coming in, they didn't know who was who. It's possible. Let me, let's, let's say this. Let's operate under the assumption the IDF comes into these kibbutzes. Is that it? Is it plural? Into, into the varying kibbutz. Kibbutz I? I don't know. I don't know the pluralist. And says, we don't know who is or isn't on our side. The people living there may open fire. The IDF may, may shoot back and friendly fire may kill some of these Israeli citizens. That still means Hamas killed them. That's how it works. If you rob a bank, and someone has a heart attack and dies in the process, you murdered them. That's how it works. Right now, the U.S. is facing the threat of serious regional conflict and potential World War III. We just had a big debate. And the only guy on stage, the only guy that was skeptical of war, I don't want to say completely anti-war, but the one because he's talked about, you know, the southern border and stuff, killing terrorists. Doesn't necessarily mean war. I I can agree with defending the southern border. But uh, it's Vivek. Vivek's the only guy. If it's not going to be Trump, and if the GOP actually, for some reason, I think, I wonder if this is what they're planning. Donald Trump is a convicted felon. They take him off the ballot. Joe Biden is removed. And it's DeSantis versus Newsom. That's why they're debating. I have to wonder. I really do. But I wonder what that means for the United States and for war, because be it Newsom or DeSantis, I think we're going to get war. The media organizations have no problem working with the most vile and evil people if it gets them a quick buck. You've got the Obama administration had no problem, no problem supporting terrorists in the Middle East if it meant U.S. needs were met. I shouldn't say needs. I should say desires. Why is it? Why is it that under Trump, ISIS is flattened? Hmm. Right now, the corporate press is claiming that Vivek Ramaswamy had the worst performance. The New York Times says he was the worst. Really? The guy who's taking social media by storm, who everyone online says was the winner, but the corporate press says he lost. Why? Because he's the only guy who says no war. If Vivek Ramaswamy closed out his entire performance by saying, and mark my words, if I become president, I will declare war on day one on every country, in, in, on every single country, Iran, China, br- br- all the BRICS nations. They'd say, wow, a true leader. If Vivek Ramaswamy says the first thing I'm going to do for this country, I am going to secure a billion dollar contract per day for Halliburton, for Boeing, for Raytheon, for Lockheed. They'd have said, wow, truly, <laughs> truly presidential. Evil people in our midst. They want war because war allows them to control things. And a lot of people think it's money, but it's not money. Money is a tool that gives you control. If someone can't eat, you have more control. So they like it when the economy is bad. They don't like it when the economy is good. When the economy is good, you have independence. You can choose to work for whoever you want. You say, look, I've got money. You got to give me a good deal. When the economy is bad, you're desperate. They want you desperate. They want there to be war. They want control. Who is they? The neocon and neoliberal establishment. That's who I'm talking about. Republicans and Democrats. They always try to say like, they is anti-Semitic. No. I want Israel to defend itself. I want them to be able to defend themselves. I think the far left is attacking Jewish people in this country and it's psychotic. I can't stand the far left. I don't think Israel's innocent. I think they do a lot of things wrong. 
The point is, the biggest threat to this country are the ultra elites who would sell you out, who would work with Hamas terrorists, who would fan the flames of war to enrich themselves. As Vivek said, spending trillions, killing millions to make billions for themselves. And he was the only guy willing to say it. And for that, they say he loses. Spare me. When we see stories like this, I believe that these news organizations should be brought before Congress and made to answer for this. Because I, I got to tell you, these guys had foreknowledge. And I do believe there's a possibility that these, these reporters contacted their, their uh, corporate press liaisons and said, on October 7th, there will be major action and we're going to have the content. Do you want it? And they said, OK, you know, we'll take it. We're not going to ask any questions. No hard moral questions there. You know what they could have done? They could have said, we do not want to be party to whatever it is Hamas is engaged in. Post the photos online. We'll, we'll, we'll post whatever photos appear. But understand this. My final thoughts, as I stated earlier, Hamas is not going to allow pro-Israel journalists on scene. Question their motives. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.